of glory, we worship you this afternoon, our God. Our Father, our friend, our firm foundation, our salvation, our breath, our hope, our everything. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Elohim, Shalom. Father, we thank you so much for this afternoon, our King of glory. We thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Father, for the journey, mercies, my God. We pray that, Lord, our praises and our worship are an aroma to you this afternoon, O oh God. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come and speak to us. Come and speak to me, O oh God, and through me, O oh King of glory, that you will alone speak to your children this afternoon. Lord, I pray that you quiet our spirit so King of glory, that Lord we may be able to understand your word this afternoon, O oh God. Father, because our righteousness is filthy rags, O oh God. Father, come and take a center stage in our place. In your place, O oh Lord, and in our hearts, O oh God. Take at a center stage, O oh King of glory. Father, we pray that you quiet all other voices, O oh God. That you alone, O oh God, you'll speak, O oh King of glory. We know that, Lord, you're here because your presence is heaven to us, O oh Lord. Father, your presence is evident in this place. Your presence is in, our, uh, in, in us, O oh God. Father, have your way in our lives. Reign in this place, O oh God. Reign in our hearts, O oh God. Reign in the cathedral. Reign in the place in Uganda. Reign in the province, O oh God. Reign in our hearts, O oh Lord. Father, we ask you to reign. Lord, come and have your way. Come, Lord, and transform our lives. Come and strengthen us, O oh God. Come and direct our paths, O oh King of glory. Father, we know that this afternoon your ears are attentive and your eyes are on us, O oh Lord, as your children. We thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're most welcome. Yes, my name is Caroline Kermo. And I fellowship from St. Luke's Church in Tinda. And I got saved 2000, 29th March, 3 a.m. in the morning, praise the Lord. And I am a teacher of the gospel, and I am not afraid of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Yes, this afternoon, we are going to share from the book of Judges. Judges chapter 16, Judges chapter 16, I'm going to read from verse 1 through 21, Judges chapter 16, verses 1 through 21. One day Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute, he went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn we will kill him. Verse 3. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Sometime later, he fell in love with the woman in the valley of, the, in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines were to her, went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him. So we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 11 hundred shekels of silver. Verse 6. So Delilah said to, someone, to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh thong, thongs that have not been dried, 
I will become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh thongs that had not been dried, and she tied him with, with, with them. With men hidden in the room, he called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the thongs as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to flame, to a flame. So, he, so the secret in the strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. Verse 11, he said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I will become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with, with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, until now, you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids on my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a spin, I will become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids in his own... I beg your pardon. Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from, from his sleep and he pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then he said to him, How can you... How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't, and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded, with, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. Verse 17. So he told her everything no razor, no, no razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite, set apart to God, set apart to God since birth. If my head were, were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other. Verse 18, when Delilah saw that he was told, when Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she went, she went, word to the rulers. She went, no, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back, come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. Having put him to, to sleep on her lap, she called a man to shave off the seven braids on his hair, of, of his hair. And so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistines, uh, upon you. He woke up from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. 21. Then the Philistines seized him, gogged out his, gorged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles they set him to grinding in the prison 
This is the word of the Lord. Friends, when we look at Judges, this passage we have read, the book of Judges was written by Prophet Samuel. And uh, we have heard the story about Samson. Who was Samson and why was, why did the Lord leave him and why didn't he know that the Lord left him? When we look at this story of Samson, you see that Samson, Samson's mother did not have a child or children for some time. And when Samson came, the Lord set him apart for his glory. Samson did not know that he was created because of the glory of God. Friends, in most cases, we remember or we forget that we are here for the Lord's purpose. We tend to forget why we were created. We normally ask ourselves, why am I here, especially when you are going through challenges? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through the other? But when we look at, at this passage, his mother was unable to have children until God intervened and opened her womb. Normally, we normally think that we do things because we are learned, because we are rich, because we are who we are, or we come from the background, which is okay. And we forget that the Lord sets us apart for a particular season and to do a particular assignment. Friends, our theme today is darkness, a hindrance to, dry, to, to divine assignment. Darkness, a hindrance to, defi to divine assignments. We all have an assignment. Your assignment cannot be Carol's assignment. Amen? We have all said, the Lord has set us apart for a season, a time, and a season. But friends, we have not tapped into the anointing of God. He has divinely protected us from everything. Friends, you're here. Who of us, when you're going to bed, you close your nose and ears so that the insects don't enter your nose or eyes or ears. But the Lord has protected us. Friends, we have gone through tough times. Think about the COVID. But the Lord has preserved our lives. For a particular season and for a, I mean, for an assignment, a divine assignment. But friends, we have not known that assignment. Samson knew that his power is from the hair. He did not know that the power was from God. Even as sometimes we think that we have, oh, you are doing whatever we are doing because of our strength, because of our knowledge and wisdom, but we don't know that we do things because of the God who is in us. As believers, we tend to forget what the Lord has called us for. But there are things that are bringing darkness in our lives. They are bringing hindrance to, to I mean, to show and to, to, to remind us what the Lord has in store for us. What is that darkness that is in your life? Is it the darkness? When you look at, I mean, Delilah told, I mean, was pestering, pressurized Samson. Friends, when the enemy wants to lure you, when the enemy wants to win you to do certain things, he will press on. Satan does not get tired. He will knock and knock and knock until you open. That's what happened to Samson. Delilah pressed him, asked him, tell me, she was so patient. And let me tell you, friends, our God is patient, but when Satan wants you, actually, he will force you to do certain things against your will. This is what happened to Samson. Samson was supposed to do, I mean, to deliver the Israelites. And remember, these people, the Philistines, were so mad at him. When you read verse 14, he was, I mean, they were so mad at him because of what he did. He went and destroyed their gardens. He went, I mean, he destroyed, I mean, and, and even killed them and came 
bragging, I have killed 1,000. Him alone, because he was brave, because the Lord was upon him. Friends, there are things that go into our lives. Like this, like the Samson. Samson's strength was unnatural. Since he came from God, it was from the Lord. He was greatly feared by the Philistines, and he led, he led Israel for 20 years. Friends, when you think about yourself, maybe you don't have, you think that I don't have an assignment. You are not in any ministry. You have been coming in the cathedral, in that church you are, you come in and leave and you have not done anything in the kingdom of God. You have not added anything in the kingdom of God. I told you that I am a preacher of the gospel and my area is missions and I normally do door to door, praise the Lord, one on one. And I was also in uh, UCU um, early this, this, this week. They have a mission there. So that is my passion because I have assignment, the divine assignment. The Lord has called us friends to do our assignments at the particular time, at the particular season. Time will come when you cannot even stand like Sam Samson. Samson, Samson, they pestered him because of immorality. He left his wife, much as he's like, okay, he was led into doing what he did. Sometimes we are led to do and go astray from the presence of the Lord. Friends, there is nothing we can do without our God. When you look at, when we look at the lies, lies are darkness. We normally say that it is a simple lie. Let me lie, but I'll go before the Lord and, and he will forgive me. Friends, when you lie today, tomorrow, and the other day, you become a habitual liar. And people will not take you serious. You tell lies, and you think that it is simple, and it is, I mean, you, it, is, it becomes a routine for you to tell lies. We are talking about darkness, a hindrance to divine assignment. You see, Samson compromised and so that it is going to be okay for him to do what he did. He exposed himself to this Philistine. He did not know that the, 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 the Delilah is going to sell him off. Delilah was in, was in need of money. She was interested in money. She, and then Samson was in love with her. Can you imagine? Sometimes we mess our lives. You think that you're confiding in this person other than confiding in God. And this person sells you out and tells out the secret. Think about it. What is that darkness in your life? Friends, sometimes we use our mouths to abuse others, to belittle others, to discourage others. That is a darkness which can hinder you from getting to divine ass assignment. When you look at... When we look at how... Samson struggled. He would normally say that I, when you do ABCD, I will be like any other man. Meaning, friends, without God, we are weak. There is no way we can fight temptation. We are tempted on a daily basis. If our Jesus was tempted, how about us? Satan tempts us on a daily basis. But in him, we are strong. In him, we will overcome. Because we are tempted every day and every time. Samson became so desperate and he thought that by giving in, this woman will keep him safe because he was being, I mean, he, they were really looking after, I mean, looking, looking for him. They wanted him dead. You know, sometimes we say that deceitfulness is not, is not a good thing. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful who can understand it apart from God. Friends, you could be there even in your heart, you're telling lies. In your heart, you're not here. The body is here, but the spirit and the thoughts are somewhere else. We don't even give time to our God. If we cannot tithe the time the Lord, the Lord has given us 24 hours in a day, but we don't give him that time. We don't commune with him. I mean, when the devil sees that you don't have time for your God, he'll come and knock and knock, and knock, and he will not stop knocking until he wins you to his side. 
But for us who are children of God, we are saying that let his presence remain in us. We should not be an example of Samson because Samson was lured by that woman and the presence of God left him. Friends, when the darkness comes into our lives, darkness of lies, darkness of, 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 of immorality, darkness of unforgiveness, it will not let us go until we are in the presence of God. But how do we do this? You see, sin is doing so many things in our lives. And remember, sin separates us from the presence of God. There is no big sin. There is no, I mean, sin is sin. The Bible says that that means sin is sin. You could say that I, can, I know the other person has murdered. And for me, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my, I'm just telling a lie. It is sin. When you sin, go before the Lord and repent. And when you repent, do 360 degrees. Don't return to what you did. That is repentance. But when you look at the verse Verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, you can imagine, they were monitoring, the Philistines were monitoring Samson's steps, sometimes some songs, movements. That is how we as the children of God, we are monitored by Satan on a daily basis. Whatever you do, whichever step you take, the, the devil is on our case. But what do we do? I normally tell people that when I, I, I am in my car driving, I am in the bathroom, I'm in prayer. Basically, I am in prayer. My heart is praying. My mouth is praying. I mean, each and every part of my body because I know if I fall down, the people I have brought to Christ, they will also fall. There's one time that the lady told me that because I had the, I, I'm in two ministry and I was, every Sunday I go to different uh, churches. So this lady calls me from Montinda and said that, Carol, where are you, Wagua? That did you backslide? That if, I mean, if you backslide, what are we going to do? So she did not even let me to explain to, to, explain to her. But friends, when, when am I saying that let us pray for one another? Let us keep in the presence of the Lord because the enemy is after us. What is this darkness? You could be saying that maybe you don't have the darkness that Samson was going through, but you have your personal secret darkness. The Lord is telling us today that leave that darkness because you have an assignment. You have a purpose. Because you, have crea you were created for a purpose. We have been set aside for a, time, a particular season, a particular time. The Lord wants to use you and me for his glory. Because he does not share his glory with anyone. But friends, we are not available. Even when the Lord wants to speak to us, we wrap the prayer. We say that God, you know, be man, I'm tired. We wrap the prayer, we don't listen. Because we are always in a hurry. We don't want to speak to, I mean, we only want to speak what we want. But we don't want to listen to our God. That is what is bringing us not to experience the divine assignment in the kingdom of God. I have told you each one of us has an assignment. You see, temptation makes us to go away from the presence of the Lord. Temptation makes us to leave the presence of the Lord. Especially, we normally, we, I mean, we normally, the, our eyes, our ears, what do we use our eyes? What, which things do we watch? What do you use your ears? And which things do you, your, ear, your ears hear? But which things and radio stations or TV stations are you listening to? As a believer, the mouth, the feet, your hands. I mean, when you think, what, I mean, what do you receive with your heart other than the word of God? Delilah was so bright that she pressed on and pressed on. Friends, when we press on and on, we shall remain in the presence of the Lord. But when we move away from the presence, we are bound to sin. And we are bound to fail. 
and we are bound not to get the divine assignment because, friends, your assignment will be there until you leave this world because it, it will remain untouched, actually. But when you know that you have a divine assignment and you surrender to God and you say that, Lord, here I am, send me, I am available. Most, of, most of, the, of the time they say that for us who go out and preach, we have nothing to do. But friends, that is also work. Praise the Lord. It is also work because the Lord has told us that you go out and spread the gospel. Bring the, 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 bring the, 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 the converts to the kingdom of God so that the reverend will pastor them. Because for me, I cannot pastor. I cannot, you know, I am not good at listening me, I am good at. When I go out, I tell the person to give me two minutes and I share the, the gospel. And they are the person. Because I know that the Holy Spirit goes before us. Friends, the Lord wants us to change. The Lord wants us to be transformed. The Lord wants us to use us. He wants to transform our, our lives the way we speak, the way we walk, the way we do things. Even the way we eat as believers. Friends, there is one time I, we went to a party and I saw a believer here, you know, heaping food. Eh? And remember, they were not even going to finish it. And there is a queue behind them. Praise the Lord. So, how do we conduct ourselves? Is that also a kind of darkness in our lives that cannot allow us to enter the divine assignment? Friend, there are so many things that are going around in, in families, spouses, husbands, wives. How do you relate before your children? How do you relate with the colleagues at work, even in church? You find a church, I mean, a church, we, we are all one, we are children of God, and then when you come to church, you even don't want to look at your neighbor. That is darkness, friends. Our God wants us to be together. Because he's one with Jesus Christ. He wants us to believe in him and remain in his presence. But we have not availed ourselves. As I conclude because of time. I want us to remember that. Let us remember to read our Bible on a daily basis. Because that is how we are going to overcome the enemy. Samson had a relationship with God but he strayed away into darkness and the presence of God left him. Samson gave in because of the pressure. Friends, do we give in to the pressures of this world? There's someone who, has, who came and told me that, Carol, I want you to do for me something. Here is money. He had, <laughs> there was a lot of money. He wanted me to take him to one of the big shots in the country and he told me, he brought the money in the bag. But friends, the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. I told him that I don't need money to take you there. I need your name so that I can forward the name there. Praise the Lord. Not that I, because I have a lot of money, but because of my God, because of salvation, I am not ready to compromise my salvation. Because it had led, I mean, the Lord took me from afar to make me who I am today. Even you could be there. You say that you're weak. Because Samson will say that if you do ABCD, I'll be weak like any other man. Friends, we are weak without Christ. We are weak without his presence. We are weak without reading the word. Because the word is power. The word is everything to us. We are weak without prayer. But what are we saying today? That if we want to be connected in the divine assignment, let us avail ourselves. Let us ask the Lord to help us with this temptation thing because we are going to be tempted because our Jesus was tempted. But he coached, when, when he was tempted, he quoted scripture. Friends, do you have a word in your head or you have words? There are two things. Oinachigambo, oba oinebigambo. Hello? Yes. Either you have a word or you have words. Are you meditating on the words they have been telling you, belittling you, 
undermining you, discouraging you, or you have the word of God. Let us pray. Creating me a clean heart, oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within us, creating us, oh Lord, creating me a clean heart. world when we have not done that you assigned us oh God Father have your way and reign in our lives in Jesus name 